Hi, I'm Andrew Randall from AR Coaching and I'm here today with Lowell from the uh, Sport Lab. We're going to talk today a bit about uh, your fueling strategy on the bike, which I think is the easiest thing you can do to improve your performance. I'm from the Sport Lab, which is a sport therapy, sport nutrition clinic. And um, what we do is just that. Um, I guess a little bit about my background is I come from the mountain biking world where I race 12 and 24 hour events and right. did everything completely wrong in nutrition. And <laughs> in uh, knowing that, uh, studied biochemistry, chemistry, and then medicine to really get a handle on how we can approach an athlete. And there's a lot of athletes that don't have a game plan when it comes to fueling. So what we're talking about is caloric intake today. Mm -hmm. Um, what's, you know, what's the limiting factor for people in uh, how many calories they can take in on the bike? Sure. The, the real limiting factor isn't, in fact, the number of calories, but the form of the calorie right. that it comes in. Um, it's a term called gastric emptying, which is basically how fast can stuff empty from the stomach. Mm -hmm. Because you can't really absorb fuel so, in your stomach. It's yeah. all in your intestine. So if you take a whole bunch of stuff in and it's not emptying properly, guess where it's going to sit? in your stomach, yeah. feel gassy, feel bloated. So sometimes it's not a function of the number of calories, but the form in which the calories are consumed. Right, and so that's how we would get around the problem of how much you can take in, is, is sort of the formulation of the food you're taking in? Is a that absolutely, yeah. absolutely. The, um, the form in of the, there's a lot of sports supplements out there. Yeah, absolutely. And they're formulated in a very specific way. And those specific ways are to match some of them <laughs> um, how fast you can actually empty the product from your stomach. Yeah. So there's the emptying of the product from your stomach, and if the more you can empty, mm -hmm. the more calorie you have available for your muscle to be able to actually utilize to generate energy. Yeah. And that's where you see the, you know, I would say almost instantaneous improvement in your training because you can do more work on the bike because you're taking in more energy. And when I was training, you know, the days where I didn't follow my fueling strategy properly, I felt it at the end of my rides. I didn't perform the way I was hoping to, so it's important. Um, and essentially, this is something that you need to train your body to do. You need to develop the consistency. Abs uh, I, you've got it. Absolutely yeah. right. The, there's consistency in all forms of training. There's the physical training mm. and what we call at the sport lab the biochemical training. Right. So getting your body used to having a very specific strategy and doing it over and over and over mm -hmm. again, whether it's a 30-minute workout or whether it's a three-hour workout, yeah. it's always done the same way. So yeah. you know what to expect from your body. You have intensity. Workouts, you know how fuel is emptying from your stomach, and right. those intensity workouts are mimicking breaks, yes. right? Yeah. So if you know that you can take this fuel in at high intensity and you don't feel nauseous, you don't feel bloated, and you feel like you've got lots of energy, how are you going to feel in a break, in a race situation? The yeah. same way. Yeah. And, you know, now we were just chatting before we do the interview here, and I was saying to Lowell, I take the, uh, the caloric intake, I keep it up even on my easy rides. I, I do it all the time now. Mm -hmm. And the big benefit I'm finding is not only performance, but also how you feel after the rides. You're not completely depleted. You know, I used to finish my rides totally depleted, but when I started the fueling strategy, you know, you think about that day to day, not feeling depleted all the time. It's, it's, it's pretty important, so. Well, it's training your body to use the calorie appropriately, yeah. right? At intensity, we burn a lot of carbohydrate, but there's only a finite amount of carbohydrate you can store in your body. Right those kind of long, slow distance, zone one workouts, you can burn a lot of free fatty acid. Most of us have got lots of free fatty yeah, acids, yeah. but you've got to conserve that carb, so when you need it, you got it. You got it. Um, yeah. And if you're not taking it in, it's not going to be there right. um, when you need it. Okay, and I guess, you know, one of the things I've been dealing with with some of my athletes is there's a big misconception out there, I think, that uh, in order to lose weight, people don't eat on the bike. They don't eat when they train because they think that's how they're gonna lose weight. You know, what's your take on that? Um, it's a foolish strategy. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, when you're biking is when you're putting your body through most physical demands and biochemical demands. Right. And the last thing an athlete wants to fall into is overtraining syndrome or overreaching, Absolutely. where you're starting to tear up your own muscle mass which are amino acids, and guess what we use if we don't have carbohydrate in the body? Right, yeah. Amino acids at intensity. We may burn up carb to the limit of how much we have, and then we're burning up free fatty acids. So you're burning all these fuel sources, including your own muscle. Right. And if you're not rebuilding the muscle, or you're not 
trying to maintain the muscle by actually fueling on the bike, you're running the risk of more injury because that muscle has to repair. Mm -hmm. um, or if you become catabolic and burn up your own muscle mass, yeah. you're losing power. Yes, yeah. Okay. Which is the last thing a cyclist wants. So in, essentially it also feeds into the health issue around cycling. Of We all want to be healthy. Yeah. If we have a proper fueling strategy, it's going to help us stay that way. Yeah, it sure is. And you yeah. want to maintain that weight to power ratio is Perfect. really what it is. Lowell, thanks for uh, coming down today and doing the Q&A with us. Thank you. Yeah, it was really interesting. And from the discussion, you can tell that the uh, fueling strategy is a really important part of your time on the bike. It should be something that you pay attention to and develop some consistency with. If you, if you have any questions, you can reach me at arcoaching.ca. And uh, Lowell has some great stuff on the sportlab.ca website.